The other type of conversions we want to set up are for phone calls. Go and click plus new conversion action and then click the phone call option. So there will be two different conversions we're gonna set up for our business here. The first is the calls from ads option we have, um, as, and this should be used for all campaigns that are using the call asset, which we set up in the previous section. So we'll set this one up first, just click continue. Leave the goal and action optimization the way that it is. We definitely want the primary action enabled as we want the system to figure out how to get more phone calls. We don't just want it for reporting reasons. Under conversion name, so use any naming convention that you want, just make it so it's easily identifiable for you in the Google Ads dashboard. We'll call this calls from ads. Value, so we won't select a value for this conversion action as there's not an immediate purchase from this event happening. Uh, so we typically leave these conversion values for the e-commerce events as mentioned. So count, select one, as we don't want to over-report how many potential customers we are generating from our campaigns. The next option is call length. So the call length is where you enter how long a call has to go for, for it to be counted as a conversion. The default is 60 seconds, which is quite a long time. This means that if a customer calls you and it only goes for 59 seconds or less, then it will not be counted as a conversion. Now we recommend lowering this down to one second to generate as much conversion data as possible. As long as the count is on one, each one will be a unique customer, which is what's most important. So for the click through conversion window, let's just leave that at 30 days, just like the form leads. Then select data driven attribution. Click done and you're finished. Now you don't need to insert any code onto the website as this event happens before the user goes there. To control which number you want to be called and tracked, you have to go back and set that up on the call asset, though we did do that in the current flow. Now that we're tracking calls on our ads, we also want to track when someone calls us when they go to our website. So finish here, click done, um, and then go new conversion action. Yep, and then uh, phone calls again. And then this time we'll select calls to a phone number on your website. Now again, leave the goal and action optimizations the way that they are. And enter a conversion name that's easy for you to remember. We'll just use website phone call. So under value, again, don't use a value for the section as it's not an e-commerce event. Under count, select one, and then good. So under phone numbers, here's where it gets a bit interesting. So for the destination number, you input which number you want to receive phone calls on. This is often the number you already have on the website, though in some instances, you might want the calls to go to a different phone number, so it gives you the option. The display number. So this is where you input the phone number exactly how you see it on the website. The best thing to do is copy and paste the phone number from your website into this field. This way you don't miss any spacing or characters or formatting. Something that's actually quite interesting to know is that if you can't highlight and copy the phone number on your website, then it can't be tracked. For instance, if you have a phone number on your website and it's part of an image, then Google won't be able to track it. Google will try and or crawl the website. They will skip that entire section as it thinks it's just an image you'll need to request an update from your web team so your website displays your phone number and it is highlightable. Now, just going back, if under the text, under the display number, they mention something called a Google forwarding number. A Google forwarding number is an advanced way of conversion tracking that allows Google to track intricate call information, such as how long your phone calls went for, the location of them, phone number details, and more. Though it also improves the accuracy of conversion tracking. 
what happens in most cases when a user is searching on their computer is that they go to a website, find someone they like, but then they call up the phone number on their mobile phone. The issue with this is that if the event doesn't happen on the website and it happens on the phone, then there's no way of tracking it. What the Google forwarding number does is actually switches out the phone number on the website with an automatically generated Google phone number. Then, then when this phone number is either called directly on the website, or even if you type in the phone number manually on your device, the call will forward the calls immediately onto the business phone number, which we put above. This will then trigger the conversion event code and will record a conversion and give us this extra information. So the number is only switched out if somebody clicks on an ad. You can test this by just going to the website per normal, just type it in directly, and you'll see that the number is still the same. Another thing is that the phone number automatically changes every 60 days. Though, if a customer calls that phone number again within that 60-day period, the 60-day window resets, so they'll always have your phone number until they stop contacting you within a 60-day period. You can also only select one phone number to be used for Google call forwarding. So if you have two or more different phone numbers on your website, then you need to select which one you'd like to be tracked. Now under the call length, we recommend keeping it one second again. And the click through conversion window, let's just leave it at 30 days, just like the lead forms. Then select data driven attribution. Click done and then either click install the tag yourself if you have some experience doing so or simply just select the second one and email the tag to your developer and then done. So phone call conversions will appear in the main dashboard just like every other conversion event. Though there is a section where you can get even more information out of them such as how long people were talking for. So go to the reports at the top of the dashboard then under predefined reports and then call details. So here's where you can see all the core information that is available to you. It's in good practice to frequently check here to see how things are going. If a phone call is missed, then it will appear here that it will not appear as a conversion in the campaign, even though the campaign generated a perfectly good lead that was just missed. To check this, you can see under the status column, and you can see how many are received or missed. If the business is missing them, then let them know, as they'll often be happy to hear, as they are also missing out on potential customers.